All right, thanks to popular demand, I'm gonna make this hopefully quick little video on peripical cysts, pseudocysts, mucosils, and what's the difference between each. Let's get the nomenclature right. So this is just showing a little bit of mucosal swelling or mucositis, which is really common. You'll see in a lot of people uh, in varying degrees. This is kind of a moderate amount in the right sinus. You don't see a lot in the left sinus. See, the left sinus is pretty clear. Sometimes you'll just see a nice, small, uniform little area of mucosal thickening, and that's fairly normal. This is maybe a little bit undulated, but still within the realms of very normal, very common finding. And here there's a little bit more localized mucosal thickening, I would call this. This has kind of a curved or dome-shaped superior border. So this might get to the point where you'd consider it might be a pseudocyst, which is an accumulation of fluid within the mucosa. So really distinguishing between mucositis and an atrial pseudocyst is not very important. But what is too important is to realize that this is all within the sinus. It's nothing coming from the bone. If you look at the sinus layer, it's completely intact, the border of the sinus. This is not an inflammatory lesion from the periapex of an associated tooth. This is just a finding from within the sinus and very common and nothing to worry about. As we go on, I'll show you larger and larger pseudocysts. This is kind of a moderately sized, kind of a common size of a pseudocyst that you'll find. You still see, looks like the sinus border is intact. If I was showing you the actual CBCT, I could scroll through. And you see that the sinus border everywhere is intact. This is not a lesion coming from this tooth. If it were, what would look different? Well, the sinus border would be lost in some areas and you would likely see that border raised. Usually the periapical cyst is gonna have a cortex around it, a nice thin line that follows the line around it. And so if this had a nice thin line around it that kind of encapsulated the apex of that tooth, I would suspect a periapical cyst rather than just a pseudocyst. Of course, we can pulp test that tooth, check the vitality of the tooth, and if that's non-vital, that may raise our suspicions. But going on, this again is just what I would consider maybe multiple pseudocysts, just a couple of them. If you had several undulations of the sinus border, you might call this a polypoid mucosal thickening, which is more associated with allergic sinusitis, whereas that more uniform mucosal thickening is just your typical everyday mucositis. And this is a fairly large pseudocyst. It's a smaller field of view, so unfortunately it's cut off. But if you look at these borders, these are perfectly intact borders. No reason to suspect that this is coming from a donogenic infection. Now in this case, we see something different. We see a hypodensity right around the apices of these teeth. The border is still intact. The bone is still intact between where this hypodensity is and where the sinus is. If you see an infection adjacent to the sinus or you have this mucositis, you might suspect that. But still, I can't say for sure whether that's just normal everyday mucositis or that is a reaction to the inflammation in this area. If you have it really localized right around one area where you know there's a peripical lesion, then chances are that's an odontogenic mucositis and a reaction of the mucus to that local infection. And so here, what do we have? If you see a peripical cyst, there should be a cortical border around it. Now, it won't always be completely intact. In some cases, the cyst can grow fast enough that the cortex gets perforated. But in this case, it's fairly obvious that this is a lesion coming from that tooth. This tooth has been root canal treated. Here's our coronal view showing the palatal root and the axial view. And that little hypodense circle just perfectly encapsulates the apex of that tooth. So don't confuse that with other normal looking sinuses where you just get loculation of the sinus showing up in your axial view. All right, I'm gonna to go to a live view of a comb beam CT now, and this is a different case. Keeping in mind those things I just taught you about, pseudocyst and inflammatory lesion from an odontogenic infection. Tell me if you think this is one of those or something totally different. Uh, just using our symmetry rules, if you look, the sinuses are completely asymmetric. Not only is the right one opacified, Compared to the left, the left one looks normal, nice, thin, posterior lateral borders, which is what we want to see. But then also you follow the medial border of the right maxillary sinus and it bows inward. So this is encroaching into the nasal cavity. If you look here in the coronal view, it's really displacing that medial border or the lateral border of the nasal cavity. And it's kind of resorbing, or they call this displacement resorption of the turbinates, the structures in here. It doesn't look like an aggressive behavior type lesion where it's ill-defined and just destructive of areas, but it's still well-defined, maintaining that cortex, so we think more benign type of lesion, but it is invading to certain areas and resorbing other structures. So would you call this a pseudocyst? In fact, if we look over here on the left side, we have our more typical pseudocyst. The floor completely intact, 
It doesn't look like it communicates with the apex of this tooth, although you do see a tooth that's endodontically treated, you don't see that extension of bone around the apex of this tooth. All right, now let's go back over to the right side, and the border is still intact. This doesn't look like something that's arising from within the maxillary bone itself, but it looks like it's something that's arisen from within the sinus. And this area where it's starting to bow inward, where it's starting to encroach into the nasal cavity, that's about the area of the sinus ostium, where the maxillary sinus drains into the nasal cavity. And so this is what ENTs refer to as a mucosil. Very different than what we as dentists know as a mucosil. When we talk about mucosils, we're talking about our clinical finding of an obstructed minor salivary gland in the oral cavity, typically. So this is an obstructed drainage pathway of a sinus. You'll typically see these in the maxillary sinuses. Although these are rare, as you see, these can be quite destructive, although they are benign. These are thought to occur just by obstruction of that ostium and then the pressure builds up within the sinus and over time you get this pressure resorption of different adjacent structures. All right, here we have another scan. It's at the level of the maxillary dentition, so let's scroll upward and get into the maxillary sinus. We see, once again, the sinus is completely opacified. This time on the left side is the opacified one compared to the right, which looks completely normal. Both of them have fairly thin, uniform posterior lateral borders, so that's what you're looking for. Here we see, again, where this opening is way too big. We've kind of lost that medial border of the left maxillary sinus. Let's look at it from the coronal view. And it again looks like it's invading, maybe not quite as benign and not quite as well-defined corticated border around it this time. But it's similar where now we see a soft tissue structure invading into the nasal cavity in that same area, in that area where you might expect to see the sinus ostium if things still look normal. As you proceed posteriorly, looking in the coronal view, now we see the entire left side of the nasal cavity is opacified as well. So whatever this is, it's some soft tissue density, soft tissue opacity entity that's invading into the nasal cavity as we go further posteriorly. You see it's extending down even into the backwards into the nasopharynx. If I scroll inferiorly now, looking at the axial view, it continues into the oropharynx. And you can imagine that partially at least obstructing the nasal airway. The patient may start feeling something in the back of their throat. So this one, you initially look at it, it looks really similar to what I showed you of a mucosil, but it's more of a soft tissue tumor, which is invading then into the nasopharynx, even into the oropharynx as we saw. And this is an antrochoanal polyp. Again, it's something rare, something you won't likely see. But just keep in mind, you start seeing opacified sinuses, look for something else, look for the drainage pathway. If something is irregular, definitely refer to an ENT, refer them to their physician to get it checked out.